don't mind me just over here looking like Eddie Munson from Stranger Things without bangs. But you know what? We're rocking it. What's up, party people, and welcome back to my channel. So today we're trying a foundation that I found on Amazon super randomly. It popped up one day while I was browsing the beauty section, and uh, it piqued my interest. It caught my eye. It's got some pretty bold claims and a lot of reviews that back that up. This is the M. Assam Magic Finish Makeup Mousse. It's supposed to be a 4-in-1 primer, foundation, concealer, and powder. And apparently this is supposed to be magical. It literally says it makes small miracles come true. So... We'll see about that. Let's see what it says. Let's read about it. Four in one formula means primer, foundation, concealer, and powder are done in one easy step that leaves skin looking radiant and natural all day long. The light and silky consistency of this mousse looks and feels like a flawless second skin. This little miracle in a jar can be applied alone or without other makeup products. It matches almost all light to meme skin tones and blends like magic. Again, magic. They keep using that word. This is something that I was reading in the reviews and stuff too. Like people were saying that it looked like it wouldn't match their skin and then it just kind of adapted and adjusted to their skin tone and became a perfect match so um, it kind of bothers me that it doesn't go above a medium skin tone so I do apologize for those of you that can't benefit from this if this is a good product okay so before we get started I don't have any primer on I'm just gonna stick to my skincare and just call it a day and just see how it wears on its own because it's supposed to be a primer like it's supposed to have a primer built in so we're gonna test that theory so for my skincare products I just want to run through what I have on just so you know what's happening with my base I have the in beauty power up dual face setting mist sprayed all over and then I did my good molecule it's over there. I'm too lazy to go pick it up. Good Molecules Caffeine Eye Gel under my eyes. And then this next product is just, I've just been hyping this up so much on my Facebook page. Like if you know, you know. This is the Julep Beauty No Excuses Invisible Sunscreen Gel. It's SPF 40. This is why my skin's glowing so much right now. Here's what it looks like. It's just a mousse. Uh, it definitely looks like the Maybelline mousse foundation that we all used back in middle school that we dropped on our mom's carpet and got in trouble every day for. I don't really know what the best way to apply this is. I'm gonna try it a couple different ways. I'm gonna try it with a sponge and I may try a couple different brushes too just to kind of see like what's the best type of tool to use this with. Here's what it looks like in the back of my hand. I wanted to swatch it on like the palest part of my body just so you could see how dark it was. First off, it covered up my veins instantly. Hopefully this is as full coverage as it seems to be. All right, so let's go over here. I'm just gonna kind of dot this on. I don't know how much I'm gonna need, so I'm just gonna do that much starting out. On this side, let's try it with just a normal stippling brush. Okay, so it definitely is already adjusting, but as far as the full coverageness, it's definitely full coverageness. As far as it being full coverage, it definitely isn't right out the gate. It is super, super silky, and it just completely melts into the skin. Here's what it looks like side by side with just one layer. Like, this is a very, very light layer, too. So, yeah, on this side, like, you can see the under eye cavage more. Like, it did cover up my dark circles a little bit. And, I mean, up close, like, my pores, oh, wow. My pores are completely smoothed over, like, super, super blurred. It looks like I have a applied like a tinted like pore filling primer on. On this side you can see the craters and all their glory and on this side they're just completely vanished. I'm actually gonna take a little spatula and get some out and just put it on the back of my hand and work from here because I don't want to like dip my brush in there or my sponge and then contaminate the entire thing. But for the areas where I want more coverage I'm just gonna stipple because that's the best like surefire way of getting more full coverage. So it, it really looks so lightweight and silky. I would say at this point we're kind of like a very skin-like medium. It is pretty mattifying though. Like you can see like this side where I had that julep sunscreen that just, oh, I love this stuff so much, but my skin looks a lot more luminous and glowy. And on this side, like this is just matte, smoothing, just very soft focus. So just to kind of switch it up and see if I can see a difference. I'm gonna use this Sephora foundation brush. This is from the, I think it's called the Makeup Match Collection. And just go in and see if this kind of bristle works a little bit better. But I will say it is definitely adjusting to my skin tone. I think I like the stippling brush better with this though. By the way, this is the Real Technique stippling brush that I've been using. So on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing I did initially. On this side, where I just kind of laid it down first. Yeah, as you can see, when you first put it down, it looks a lot darker on my skin. The only thing that's not the perfect shade with this is the undertone. Like it's, it's adjusted to like the depth of my skin, like the level of darkness, but it's not really adjusted to my exact skin tone. Okay, so I'm gonna prime my sponge by getting some product on there. And then I'm just gonna go Go ahead and go in and stipple this on. Not working the best with a sponge. Yeah, the sponge isn't really blending it out. Like it's kind of picking up the product and leaving behind little like patchy bald spots on my face. And it's also not adjusting as well on the sponge side. So you can probably see from side to side, this is a lot darker. Like this looks like more what it looks like when you first swatch it, like the way it looks in the jar. Um, and it's just, it looks really patchy, very uneven. So I'm gonna say the brush is the best way to go with this. And my sponge completely ate all that up. There we go. There's that coverage. Okay, wow. This is looking pretty good. So here's what it looks like up close. So my ISO is up right now. I'm gonna turn it down in just a second, but I want you to see both ways. So 
my skin literally looks like I've applied a powder to it. Like it literally looks like it's already set. It looks so smooth and soft and mattified. Like it just, it's so blurry. This is literally like a filter in a jar. Normally I'm a pretty large poured whore, but not today, my friend, not today. Now I will say, I don't know how this would work on someone that has like really, really dry skin, especially if you have a lot of flakes and stuff like that, where this kind of acts like, you know, a, a powder mixed in with a foundation. Like it does have that, you know, mattifying technology to it. So I don't know if that would emphasize dryness. But I will say I did have some like scabbage up here on my forehead from recovering acne spots, but I mean, it's not emphasizing those or making those look more flaky or dry. So. I mean, chances are pretty good, but does it wear well? Okay, that's the question. I do wanna go ahead and get like a wear test in. Oh my God, I've been sitting here talking for like 15 to 20 minutes and I haven't done a, oh, I haven't done a check-in time. Shh, it is 5.09 right now, but we're gonna say my check-in time was like, I'm gonna say 4.50. I know it's kind of a weird time, but I've literally been sitting here talking for like at least 15 or 20 minutes. I do wanna go ahead and finish up my face just to see if I have any blending issues. So let's do that real quick. I don't know if I wanna do concealer though, cause this is supposed to be a concealer too, so. Uh, actually, you know what? I got an idea. I'm gonna take just a little bit of product on a smaller brush, a more like dense brush like this, and just tap this over the immediate inner portion of my under eye, just to kind of give a little more coverage right through, ooh, that's working right through there. It literally feels like silk to the touch. Like I, just, I can't get over that. So I'm closing it up. We're gonna put it away. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the face makeup. So for bronzer, I'm gonna use a Believe Beauty in the Tropics Bronzing Powder in the shade Havana Sunset. I'm gonna use Powder Cheap Products today just to see how it blends on top cause like it claims to be like a built-in powder. So we're gonna see if we get any like dragging or pulling. And so far this is blending on like absolute butter. Actually, you know what? Hmm. We're gonna do powder products on this side and cream products on this side just to see if that powderiness, like the, the texture and the finish of it affects either one. Because if anything, we might have problems with blending cream products on where this has set to be like a powder finish. So it may be more likely to work better with powder products. But for cream bronzer, I'm gonna use the Revlon Skin Lights Face Glow Illuminator in the shade Sunburst Bronze. By the way, everything I'm using today will be listed below in the description box. So don't worry, I got you. So far, no complaints. For powder blush, I'm gonna use the Believe Beauty Major Monochrome Matte and Shimmer Blush Duo in the shade Risky Business. I'm just gonna mix both of these two together. And if you haven't caught on, I'm using all the products that I talked about in my recent absolute best long wearing products video. I'm gonna link that up here. But yeah, here's what that side looks like. So it definitely is mattifying the luminosity, like the sheen that these products have. For my cream side, I'm gonna use the ColourPop Super Shock Blush in the shade Drop of Hat. So I will say I'm not seeing any kind of blending issues with either side, so that's awesome. On the powder side, let's use a Flower Beauty Shimmer and Strobe Highlighting Palette. This has like five star reviews, so haven't used it a whole lot. Let's do it today. Probably shouldn't have used something that I haven't tested very thoroughly, but the highlighter looks a little too powdery. I don't think it's the formula though. Like I feel like it's the finish of the foundation. So I'm not sure about it. So for the cream side, I'm gonna use a ColourPop Super Shock Highlighter in the shade Flip Flops. This is their compact version of that. This is so freaking beautiful. I'm just gonna apply it with my finger. Ooh. Ooh. So the formula of the foundation makes the product go a lot further so you don't need as much. And it also makes the color a lot more intense. Like it makes it kind of like not sit as well on the skin. Cause normally I can apply this to my finger and it just completely melts and just turns to like just glassy dewiness. Yeah, I can see a lot more of that gold intensity which normally sinks right into my skin tone. You can't see that. And also it's kind of like it's looking kind of like Neapolitan ice cream because it's just not wanting to unify with the other products on there. So I'm just gonna take my stippling brush and just kind of blend around all those. It, ooh, my highlighter's gone. <laughs> highlighter's gone. Yeah, the highlighter on this side looks very cakey. Like it looks really heavy and just like makeup-y. Like it almost looks kind of ashy. So you guys know the drill. I'm gonna take it down a little bit and try to show you. So yeah, this foundation looks better on its own with no cheap products, but I'm not wearing it like that. And then the cream side looks a lot more powdery than it normally does. Like it looks like I've applied powders on this side. Okay, I'm gonna use a NYX Plump Finish Setting Spray. This adds a nice like hydration and glow to the skin. All right, so here's what it looks like once the setting spray's dried. So it definitely did kick up the glow and luminosity and sheen, especially in the highlighter region. But this is it for my face makeup. I'm not gonna use any powders. I'm not gonna set it like this is done. I am gonna do my eye makeup later on, but for now I gotta go make some dinner and do do the mom stuff and we'll see how it wears for the rest of the night so be back later all right super duper quick update i literally just threw on some makeup just 
it like five minutes ago. Why do my eyebrows look so strange though? Like they look so weird. Whatever, I don't care. We're just gonna get this done. So it's 9.08 p.m. right now. So we just hit the four hour mark and it's not holding up too well. First thing I'm noticing is that all my cheek products are fading off. Like it's getting super blotchy. Like the color is just kind of, it's just fading away. This is super weird, but my cheek products look super ashy especially when i first got done applying them like they just looked really gray not so much now like they look a little bit better now like that well i don't know about better but they, they look different now and there's a few spots on my face especially like i'm looking at a spot right here i'll get up close and show you guys in just a second but like right here there's like a really weird little dry patch right there it is so i have to kind of stay still so that autofocus doesn't mess it up but that's not skin. Keep in mind, this is the powder side for cheek products, but it looks like I applied like a really chunky monkey cream highlighter and didn't blend it out. This is actually a pretty good shot to show you guys what everything looks like. So here's what the cheek products are looking like. This is just, this is embarrassingly sad. Look at this side. Look at the patchiness. Look at the highlighters. Like, yes, they're still on there, like more so than the, the blush and bronzers for some reason. Each side looks really cakey and like powdery and very textured. My face does still look matte. Like I'm not getting shiny or anything. Forehead still looks pretty good. I don't really see any issues up there. My eyebrows are heinous today. It definitely is oxidizing to some degree. I mean, not so much to where I look, you know, like a completely different color, but there are certain spots across my face that do look darker than others. And I think that the oxidation is affecting the cheek products as well and changing the color of those. Yeah, my hope is very quickly turning more and more bleak. So, uh, We'll see. Alrighty guys, final check-in time. It is now 12.41 a.m. So we are just about to hit the eight hour mark. So I'm not over the moon about it, but I've seen worse. So pretty much everything I said earlier stands true. Something I'm noticing now is that the cream cheek product side, so this side over here, looks a little bit better, especially in the highlighter region. But on the powder side, I'm just not digging anything. And it's really funny because the highlighters are pretty much the only things that held up on either side. But I gotta say, it hasn't settled into like fine lines or pores, hasn't creased anywhere, especially looking at my under eye area where I applied that second layer as concealer. It's not creased or anything. Like it's not looking dry. Like even though it's a more powdery, finish kind of texture like it doesn't look dry i mean do i see some of my dark circles peeking through yes like the coverage hasn't held up as well as i wanted it to but it doesn't look bad and i gotta say like it's actually felt very very lightweight and very thin throughout the day i mean it doesn't feel like the most lightweight foundation i've ever worn like it's it's as skin like as it can be for the type of product that it is so yeah this is what it looks like after uh, an eight hour day. However, there is one more thing I wanted to do real quick, and that is to apply a layer on top of all this, just to see if it's one of those things that you can like touch up throughout the day. So let's just get some on the brush and let's just see if we can kind of touch it up a little bit. I don't know if this is really gonna make a difference. I don't know why I wanna do this, but here we are. Maybe you're applying your foundation early in the morning before work. It's Friday night and you wanna touch it up a little bit, but you don't wanna have to take it all off, you know? You definitely had the ability to do that with this. Girl, I tried so hard. This is one of those foundations that looks so good on camera. Like my skin right now, I don't know how it's like coming off to you guys over there, but in the viewfinder over here, like I'm, this looks flawless. So yeah, I'm still toying with the notion of doing a second wear test in this video and changing up the variables somehow, but I feel like I've tested everything I could test. Only other thing that I could think of to do is try the underpainting technique where I apply my cheek products, like my cream cheek products underneath the foundation, but I just don't know if they'd even show up. I'm definitely gonna keep using it on my own and trying to figure out if there's a best method to do. But yeah, if I decide to not go through with the second wear test in this video and just go ahead and put this up as it is, then in the comments below, let me know if you would like to see that second wear test like a second chance review kind of thing and let me know how you would like to see it. like what should i change up what should i test if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more products tested from amazon then give it a big old thumbs up here's a couple more things for you to check out next to so just venture around the channel make yourself at home subscribe if you're not already and turn the notification bell on to always see my stuff everything i'm wearing today will be listed below in the description box and i will see you guys in the next one Mwah.